soften the breath. Allowing the inhalations and the exhalations to land just where they want to, right in the moment. So we're just noticing how the breath lands after our day today, maybe rushing to get to the computer, fixing dinner, just coaxing the presence, our spirit, into present time with the breath. Gentle inhalations and exhalations. Good. When the mind wanders, we're going to bring it back to the breath, back to that central channel, the shishuna, that goes from the base of the spine all the way to the top of the head. And then inviting the breath to become deeper, reaching all the way into the pelvic floor stirring the base center then rising up, expanding the ribs, lifting the heart, energetically going all the way to the crown center and exhale root. So we're massaging our energy centers on the body. We're gonna be speaking tonight about the centers off the body, but right now we're Massaging our energy centers on the body with the breath. And with the next few cycles, allow it to be a calling out, a calling in, summoning yourself to yourself. So for the next few breath cycles, see if you can up your focus and just have your entire being just be right in that central channel, summoning yourself to yourself. Perfect. We're gonna say hello to Pachamama. So putting our awareness on the base center, the, the root chakra, the base of the spine. Sending a tap root or grounding cord all the way down into the center of Pachamama, the center of Mother Gaia. Letting our energy ground root become supported. And bringing the awareness back to the base of the spine, traveling up the central channel, all the way to the top of the head, bringing the awareness to the top of the head to the crown center. Inviting with presence the petals to unfurl the center that opens up to receive our connection, that knowing, that trust of our connection to the divine. Okay. and bringing your awareness to the heart center. And 
Notice what you notice, what happens when we simply bring our presence, our awareness to the heart. There's nothing to do, there's nothing to change. Simply allowing for presence to be there. As we spend a few more breath cycles here, resting in the heart, as we're connected to Pachamama through our base center and the grounding cord, our crown is open, receiving the light of our soul. I like to take this time to welcome in our teachers and guides, spirits and beings in the light and the unseen realms. I ask that we be surrounded in a circle of grace and protection and that any insight, any teaching, any healing that wants to come through be for everyone on this call's highest good in this lifetime, in this dimension, in this timeline. I give thanks for this sacred divine meeting for all the souls who say yes to showing up for themselves, showing up for each other, showing up for the world. May we walk with clear eyes. May we hear with clear ears open to receive the guidance. May we be present for the beauty and gifts available in our lives. May we walk the beauty way. And taking a deep breath in. And now grounding into your space. And the circle is cast. <laughs> Breathing into your front body and your back body. And when you're ready, you're gonna slowly open your eyes, letting there be soft gaze, taking in the periphery around you as you slowly allow the eyes to shift upwards. If you feel like you want to stay inward for a little bit longer, please feel free to do so. We all have different uh, nervous systems and different needs, so please take care of your internal system but as you notice when we slowly come back from being inward to the external sometimes we tend to jump from the internal fast into the external by focusing sharply and that in some ways kind of yanks our presence um, into the external so it's a good practice to slowly open up the eyes and take in the periphery so I'm looking at you or I'm looking at the computer and I'm aware of my periphery. I'm aware of owl eyes. I'm seeing what's around me. So it allows me to have my consciousness, my presence a little still like inward. So it's soft gaze, it's not intense focus, right? So when like a hawk eagle, it's like, intensely focus, the, the beam, that beam sharp laser, which is sometimes needed. 
but especially as we shift from internal exploration to external engagement, we want to um, let that process be gentle and allow ourselves to relax, right? Like we're on a, we're on a webinar about energy. We don't need to like stress our systems out, right? So, and we tend to so much in our society, whether it's our phones or computers or driving, always have to have that like super sharp focus. So giving yourself the gift of just like soft focus and letting the words, the information, the experiences be like soft waves coming over you. You know, it's evening time. Um, there's no uh, need to, um, we'll be sure of anything. So just an invitation to, to practice on your own is when you're coming from meditation or an internal practice to practice soft gaze. Ah, so welcome to this webinar on awakening consciousness and exploring spiritual advanced um, energetic anatomy. And uh, a little bit about me for those who are new to this community and to myself is um, when it comes specifically to energy anatomy, I've been studying um, energy anatomy and the chakras and an energy healer and energy uh, medicine practitioner for over 15 years. I uh, started diving into the chakras um, just ate every book up I could find um, when I was 17, 18 years old. And there was a remembering that took place. It was more of like just gobbling anything. Um, and I worked at two new age bookstores in my late teens, early twenties. And, you know, and this was before the internet and I, I'll never forget going into this old, it's like one of those stories of going to the old bookstore and you find this old book and it's like used, um, it was had a, they had a dog they had like a basset hound I just remember that and I love the dog I'd go in there and then this book appeared and it was my first book on the chakras and it was old from like the 70s and I wish I still had it um, and I just devoured it and, and did all the practices and like felt everything and that was just like a huge awakening point for me and so um, later on um, at the ripe old age of 22 I started studying uh, professionally uh, energy medicine. I'd already gone through some yoga trainings and Kundalini yoga, and I met my energy um, medicine teacher. Her name is Dr. Barb Breiner. She's actually an MD up in Michigan, and she is um, brings in this higher information on uh, esoteric healing and the spiritual anatomy. She's she's brilliant, um, brilliant woman, and. You know, I, I sat in these classes um, for over 15 years and taught and absorbed information and worked now with thousands of people one-on-one -on -one as clients in um, being an energy healer and taught classes. And, you know, I've really seen what is it when we really can attune to our energy body, just like we attune to brushing our teeth. And we attune to our muscles and we know that we need to exercise and uh, we do asana, you know, yoga. And so um, I really experienced in myself the awakening of consciousness um, by really having an intimate relationship with our anatomy. You know, like a lot of us don't know anatomy physically. Um, our liver and our spleen and like, where's our thymus and what does that do? And, or we know our anatomy, but it just stops at the physical. And so when we're on a spiritual path and we're on this path of awakening and, um, you know, it's so important to, to expand past the physical and learn our energy anatomy and how that affects our emotions, how that makes our, affects our spiritual awareness and our capacity to expand in consciousness in a way that does not fry our systems. You know, sometimes we can have uh, peak experiences and then come back and then we feel a little bit like wonky and it's because our nervous system has not been been attuned to those higher frequencies to be able to consistently hold it so uh, i have deep background in shamanic studies and sound healing and what i've seen 
um, in the shamanic communities as well is, you know, um, big healings, big things happen, you know, in ceremonies, uh, huge healings happen. And sometimes what happens when, um, though we go home and there's not um, a framework and we haven't really opened up the channels in our energy bodies, that sometimes we can have those aha moments, right? And then it's like, yeah, our life's going to change and then habit right? Our habit trumps our aha moments. So um, how the knowledge and the working with our energetic anatomy plays in is we have more chance to hold those awakened states when we're working with our energy anatomy by refining and by uh, turning up our light quotient. So the light body, the frequency of the nervous system, the spiritual nervous system can hold those higher awakened consciousness states. So I would love to see if anyone in here, and if you could write your name, for some reason it says there's a ton of Sarah Jangman here, which is my um, friend and assistant and amazing. Um, so has anyone had that, like where it's just like, whether even you're on a meditation retreat and it's just like, oh, enlightenment. And then, oh gosh, my nervous, like your nervous system can't hold it. Or you go into a ceremony and, you know, you have all these um, experiences that then, um, create contraction because you're not able to hold that. Has anyone have that? Does anyone? I'm just going to tap. So there's a yes. And I'm wondering if that's vibrational yo-yoing. Yes. And if you want to write your name, you write your name because again, it says like, um, so it says, there's like a lot of Sarah Janes, which I know that there's, oh, there's a hand raised. Let's see how I do that. Oh, Patricia. Yay. Okay. Um, so there's a hand raise and I don't know. Um, sorry guys. I'm figuring this out. Oh, so they raised their hand to a yes. So the, the raised hand is a yes to the question. So, right, right. So we have this like yo-yo of like, oh, yay. Okay. Um, and then, um, and then crash. And so, you know, my teacher always says, my energy teacher, Barb, Dr. Breiner, um, you know, says that it's like you can go the front door, the back door um, to spiritual like awakening moments. And I mean, she's definitely, um, Oh, great. So Lena came and she's coming from medicine retreat and grounding it all now. So yeah, so it's like, and I'm there too. Like I go, I go to ceremonies. I go to, um, you know, as a Kundalini Yogi for a long time where it's like really peak experiences. Um, and I mean, they work with the, the energy body as well, but there's a way that, you know, we really need to attune on a daily basis or semi-daily basis um, our energy body, our higher centers, we need to keep turning on the faucet. So when we have these peak experiences, we can hold it because that's when we come home, we get migraines, we get, you know, these spiritual crises of some sort. And sometimes, you know, no matter what we do, that's what's needed for the evolution of the soul. And sometimes it's simply that the physical has not caught up to the spiritual. And I know y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, so I, I mean, I really can't state enough how working with these higher centers, working with the advanced spiritual anatomy, is, it opens things up in a way that's gentle and it's able to really support awakening consciousness uh, moments. And the more you practice it on a day-to-day -day, um, or open up the channels on a day-to-day -day basis, the easier um, you can hold. The frequency. So I'm just going to pause for a second to. So I'm just going to. So how this is going to work? I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the centers, and then we'll go into an experience, and then I'll talk about the centers, and we'll go into an experience. And if there's ever a question, just jump into the chat thingy um, and say your name if you feel like it. Um, so. 
So we have the seven centers on the body. And if you don't know what those are, that's totally okay, but I'm not gonna go into great detail. There are, is a ton of information on the seven chakras of the body. Um, and it is really important. It's not like you jump over the seven and then go to the upper centers. The ones on the body have to be um, flowing. So even when I'm working um, with a client that I've been working with for a while, that I can really work into the petals of the soul and the petals of the higher centers, Every single time you open up the base center, you open up the solar plexus, you need those to be um, nice and open. And of course, we always have something that's life like going on. We're never, I don't believe in like perfect balance. Um, and things are never, you know, like you look at the pictures of the chakras that are all like, do symmetrical. Like that's just never, you know, that's not real time. That's like a two dimensional picture of something living. Right. So just like, as we breathe, there's an inhalation, exhalation, you know, when I'm, um, when I was first falling in love with my sweetie, there was just like, I mean, my heart center, I think was like to Texas and back. Right. And it was this, this breathing and then it's like, Oh, okay. And then coming back. So now I'm coming into balance more where it's like, there's more of, um, the solar plexus and here's this, right? So there's a flow. So the, the seven centers on the body um, need to be in some sort of a flow and paying attention to them before we go to the upper centers. So the seven chakras on the body. We've all seen it in like yoga studios at least, or um, it's on like, I forgot where I was, I was visiting family in Charleston and it was some place I was like, dang, it's even here. Anyways, chakras are everywhere. And so the seven chakras on the body, you have the root center right at the base of the spine. Oh, look, I'll send you a PDF that's not this, but so the red pen got really excited and burst. So it's like a strong base. So this person has a strong base center. So base center, the root, the connection to the earth star, how we are uh, functioning, how we um, connect to our bodies. This is all survival root stuff. So this is about um, the connection to the body. This is about the adrenals. This is about the uh, kidneys. Um, this is where uh, familial, tribal consciousness, base center. Then we go up to the sacral center, the womb center the center of relationships, also finances, interesting. Um, this is the center of, um, especially for women, the creation center. So creativity is huge here. Then we go up to the third chakra, the seat of power, also the seat of emotions. So just like when you um, hear something that shocks you, it's like, oh, I feel like I got shocked, um, soft in the stomach or, I feel nauseous. You know, some people like when they're really emotional, they overeat. Some people when they're emotional, they undereat. You know, so it's like it's di how we digest our emotional life is solar plexus. Going up into the heart center. We all know the heart center, right? So heart center, love, love of self, love of and relationships. So sometimes that can get confusing where the the heart center um, especially when we're still kind of working out the first three centers of the body, when it's like, we love, we love, and it's relation it, relationship. It's actually the second chakra that's really activated, even though we have tangents of the heart, but when we really get to the heart level of relationships, that's unconditional love. And I, I know that we all strive for that, but then there's so many different, um, layers of how deeply do we actually unconditionally love ourselves and somebody else. So this is, um, I mean, we all know like the pains of the heart, the, the suffering, this is where, this is humanities right here, the heart center. Um, and this works with the thymus. So if there's been a lot of grief or um, ache of the heart, so to speak, and the emotional over time, that's where the immune system, thymus, the immune system over time gets, um, just worn out. And when we go to the karmic level, which we'll talk about in the 10th chakra that relates to the fourth, um, this is where like deep karma that we come in from different lives and from um, whether it's love of relationship or love of self, you know? So if we have a deep karmic relationship that, you know, um, we are in this lifetime, we know we've been, in, been with them for so many different lifetimes, this is where it can show up as well as the 10th center. 
going up to the throat, the throat centers, communication. Um, it's just as much as about the voice and external communication as it is about listening, listening to our intuition, right? So the throat is the connection between the intuition, the third eye, and the heart. So when our throat is really um, constricted, there's going to be discon um, um, discrepancy between how clearly we are accessing our wisdom of the heart and the intuition. Because if you think, like when this center is like really tight, right? And then there's like all this flow happening. It's just like trickle, trickle. You can think like, oh, I'm listening to the heart and my intuition is this because these need to be in communication when really you're not getting the full picture. There's a um, filter on that. So throat really important in the communication between the intuition and the heart's wisdom. Which one am I? So the, um, the third eye. Right, so this is the place of vision. This is the place of um, intuition. This is the place of neutrality. That you know, we, we do the um, center of the the point between the eyebrows, but really where it also is is located. You go back, and it's the center of head because it's the pineal and pituitary region, pituitary associated with the third eye. So, um, and this is an interesting center because. We can blow it out. We can be very visual, very clairvoyant. But if the crown isn't open, everything is, you know, we need all of it in working order. Then there can be a lot of, um, you can have visions. You can be very clairvoyant. Um, you can um, be a seer. But there is a lack of spiritual connection because the crown, if the crown's really um, shut down. So this happens a lot in, with psychedelics. And I see this a lot um, in clients where, especially if you take a lot of psychedelics, it's like your Ajna gets blown, or so third eye is also called Ajna. Um, I apologize for running through this really quickly, but I want to get to that first interest. Um, the, the Ajna gets blown out, but the crown gets deficient. And so what happens is we go from illumination to delusion. And that is a very fine line. And um, especially if you're used to going to ceremonies, and especially if doing medicine work in that way, you really want to check and come back into center, have awareness come back into the center channel and the center body and make and really work with your crown. So that is also, um, this is dreams, right? So vision, dreams, pituitary, this is the master gland. So then going up to the crown center, the crown sits on the top of the head, it, the petals open up to receive the divine um, light, to receive your own soul light. So if our crown is like, like this, or if we have energies around our crown, whether it's ancestral in, um, um, energy on our crown or other people's energy or beliefs, right, or cultural, this is a lot where I see cultural energy get stuck at the crown. Right. So especially like if you've been raised Catholic and you're kind of busting out from that and it's like your connection to God or the divine is very much um, been orchestrated by the, the Catholic church and it's not in resonance with your soul or a present time. Like there's energy culturally that gets stuck at the crown. So that can be this feeling of, you know, where's my connection with the divine? Where's my own connection with the divine? And this can happen too with, it doesn't have to be Catholicism. It can be um, any path that you follow. If you go down like the road of Andean shamanism that I have or Tibetan Buddhism, you know, anything that is cultural, you have to check, is it in present time? You know, so there's a, there's a constriction that can happen at the crown around connection with the divine belief. Um, so especially though, if you are, you know, busting through uh, familial patterns and beliefs, if you're like the um, oddball or the, um, the rebel of the family, a lot of energy can stay um, stuck at the crown. That is when the doubt comes in, like, am I crazy? You know, is this something I can trust? So trust, trust is big here, knowing and trust crown. So um, those are things to... Um, pay attention to. So those are the seven chakras of the body. And then there is, um, so that's the seven chakras of the body. And then the lineage that I teach from esoteric healing and advanced energy anatomy, this is personality. 
So this is still working with the personality body, which includes the emotional body, the mental body, and part of the causal body, which I'll get into as much as I can. Um, this might be like part one of a, a couple of series. So, um, so this is this, the personality body. So most of humanity is still working on like the lower half of the personality body, which is why there's not a lot of information on the spiritual body. We're just simply as a, um, a human race and cult, especially culture, we are not, it's not accessible. Right. And so, I mean, it's beautiful that the, the awareness of energy, the awareness of chakras, meditation, you know, it's coming into the mainstream, um, as we all know, um, of our culture and uh, humanity, which is great, you know, but people are still just trying to figure out like, whoa, I'm not just physical form, you know, so there's a way that, um, this is a little bit ahead of its time, you know, and even when I work with someone, I don't just jump into working with the higher centers. Um, it will create, um, the higher frequencies will come in and these will light up and it'll create the, what my teacher calls the stuff pig effect, you know, be very uncomfortable. It doesn't serve anything or anyone. So, um, these are the personality and we're just all doing our best figuring things out. And as we progress in our spiritual practice or spiritual path and our soul path, these, the, the upper centers start to blossom. The crowns, the petals on the crown start to open up. Then we get into the soul light, the eighth center. I keep slouching so you can see the top of my head and I can just move my computer. Um, so the soul light, uh, about a foot above the head. A handy picture, my sweetie drew. Soul light foot above the head. And this is actually a center that's found in a lot of different traditions and it's talked about more. Um, it's called the Ba, B-A in Egyptian alchemy. And I'm totally blanking what it's called in Tibetan Buddhism. But um, so this center is more, I wouldn't say universal, but um, when you get deep into different traditions, they talk about the soul light, the Ba, the, um, the causal body. And so this center is a foot above the head, and this acts as an, um, like a, um, oh, what are the, like a, totally, what is those things called? Um, electric box circuit breaker. So this acts as a circuit breaker between the upper centers, the higher frequencies of your individuated soul, right? Your circuitry. And this is the soul light. This is also like when I'm reading the Akashic Records when there is, um, you know, this, the soul piece still has karmic influence. When we go into upper centers, you get less and less karmic things going on. Um, so the soul light, a foot above the head is really, it's, it's such a complex center that we won't get into it all right now. Um, but it's got these different petals that relate um, from the personality body to the spiritual body. So the eighth center is really the center that's like, okay, here are, here are these upper centers. Here's these lower centers as above, so below. This acts as a communication. I won't say device, but, um, you know, it's the, it's the, the relay station that it goes through. So if we got blasted with our 12th chakra energy, right away are we would have a short circuit so um and there's you know there's a lot of picture and iconog um, iconography i'm sorry left brain um that you know has the picture of the the bright light above the head right so that's the soul that's the soul light or the ba i'm just gonna pause for a second So in our evolution, as we are progressing on our spiritual path and the soul um, and the, the path of the soul, you know, this is where we start changing habits. We start, um, and you all know this, like we, we have different desires. We don't really want to go out to the rave till two in the morning. We are, we're doing different things. No judgment on that. It's just simply, um, you know, it could be something else, like our habits change, our friendships change, you know, the people that we might have um, gravitated to start to change when the petals of the soul start to open and blossom, they're bringing in higher frequency. 
So this is also too, as we get into the higher centers where you're, you're bringing in higher frequency to your form as these start to open and connect with the personality body. And this is where a crisis can happen and frequently happens. And a lot of times, especially in our culture where it's like, we're manifesting our best lives all the time, yada, yada. There's this, this belief that's been like inserted into um, more of the spiritual culture that if things are going haywire, that you've done something wrong. And that is a huge misconception that then adds more suffering to the individual. What also is happening is the spiritual higher frequencies are coming in and it just is actually a sign of growth, of spiritual growth. So even though in, when you're in the trenches and when it feels really, um, well, really shitty, right? When we're in the dark night of the soul, it's like, what did I do? I've been doing my mantras. I've been doing my yoga. I've done this, done that, did my crystal grid and shit, what the hell, you know? So th there can be this like, still it's a program that's so subtle that gets inserted into the consciousness, which is a, um, it's a preference belief. Like if I'm good, X, Y, and Z will happen. Right. And it's indoctrinated into all of us or most of us. And it goes so far back into the lineage and so far back into the DNA and about, um, a God that's deeming you worthy or not heaven or hell you're a sinner. You're not, you know, like it, it just is so deep in our consciousness. And I can't tell you how many people I work with that would never say that they are on, um, any, uh, like conservative religious path, but the belief gets so ingrained in us that I'm doing the meditations. I did this practice and this still isn't working out. So there's that deep belief that if I do, if I'm a good girl, if I'm a good boy, if I do X, Y, and Z, and now it just gets weirder, right? It's not anymore. Just eat your broccoli. It's like chant over these crystals a million times and then like walk around a tree, you know, seven times at midnight. Like it's just, the things get weirder. Right. But the, the, the thing is the same. Um, oh, move my earring. Okay. okay. Is that better? So, um, basically there, you know, like that belief of if I do these practices, whatever they are, conservative, witchy, weird, doesn't really matter that life will be easy. And I think that is, um, just a disservice to all of us in our consciousness, because then it's like, we're bad. What am I doing wrong? So from this perspective, what's happening is actually these upper centers are lighting up. And when that happens, it's like this rain of higher frequency is coming into the soul and into the crown, into the body. And it's, and it's just lighting up the dross, the density. And so it's actually a sign of um, growth in that you're, you're on the path. And I was talking to my teacher the other day and, you know, and we were talking about initiations and she did this one practice that um, we do um, in the advanced classes. And she was just like, dang, you've been working. I'm like, I know because I had all sorts of things going on wrong, like wrong. You know what I mean? It's just like this like perception of, you know, uh, if I'm doing things right, life will be smooth. So anyways, tangent there, but that was really to like help remove, if that's helpful, anything that like, if you haven't found your beloved money's not flowing in, you know, you haven't found the perfect job, all these things that like, as if you've done something wrong, like that is just like hogwash. So that's just my spiel on that. That just actually means that your spiritual centers and your light body is getting more and more refined. And it's just removing those things that aren't in alignment with the higher frequencies. Is that helpful? Let's move. Okay, so, um, ah, hogwash, yay. So moving on, so eighth center, super important. And we'll go into meditation here, actually after I just touch on these points. So this, the ninth center, the, we're going up into the spiritual body, we're going up into more advanced anatomy. So this is the ninth center that is above the eighth center. This is called the monastic from the esoteric healing path, the monastic center or ninth chakra. This is really about higher mind. This is about when, and this is from the karmic level of um, when we um, 
when we start to tune in and we get those higher voltage ideas, you all know what I'm talking about. It's like you can have a mental aha moment and then you know those times where it's still like from the mental plane, but it's from a more um, refined place. Do you all know what I'm, can, do you all know what I'm talking about when I say that? Have you had that like, but it's still thought, which we'll get into a difference of feeling. Um, so that is the, that comes from the ninth center. So the ninth chakra is starting to um, really light up. And so in similar to this is, you know, it's not like these upper centers aren't on, so to speak. And I'll just say like average humanity, it's on in everybody's spiritual anatomy. And what the difference is, is we can either be, you know, having a car driving down a road in like Arizona or something where the sun's always shining and never have the sunroof open. So when we open up the sunroof, then we can let the light in. So it's the same thing. So it doesn't mean necessarily that people aren't you know, that, um, like average humanity, um, that is not necessarily at the height of ascension or consciousness. It doesn't mean that their upper centers don't exist. It's just that this intermediary area is like the, the sunroof is still on. So as they grow and as their spiritual, um, aha moments and usually crises that really wake up the soul and wake up choice, because we always have choice to, to grow and to open these up, then that sunroof will happen and then the light will pour through. And that's like a lot of times too, when it's like, Oh, I had this big awakening and now I lost my job, lost, you know, my house and my partnership is like exploding. That's like, Oh, you're in like a great initiation. It doesn't feel like that. Of course I've been there. It's like hell. We've all been like, it's just like the dark night of the soul. Um, but that means that there's like flow happening a lot of the time. So ninth center higher mental functioning where it's, you know, where it's like, even if you're, um, I get a lot of messages when I'm hiking or in the shower, shower and bath, higher plane mental creativity just like lights up for me. Um, so that is the realm of um, expansion from the monastic, the ninth center. Then we travel up from the ninth center to the 10th center, the buddhic center, the 10th chakra. Dink a dink, 10th center. Um, and partly I look, there's really not, I'll show you a different diagram soon, but um, there's not that much information on the internet. Like you can't like necessarily Google Buddhic center and come up with much. You come up with some things. Um, but anyway, so 10th center, the Buddhic center. This is about the, the higher heart, the, the spiritual heart. This is about... Um, the places of how we love ourselves. This is really actually a lot of where, um, I won't say all of humanity, but a lot of humanity is waking up and then it's like the, the, the heart, the karmic heart. So this is where the 10th center is so big right now. Um, it's so big what's happening. Um, and so this is really about the higher love principle. And this is a tough, initiation to go through. So each chakra has the initiations you go through when it like lights on. And, um, this is a tough one. This is a, this is one where again, like where, um, where people get divorced or they they have a hard hit of the heart here, but it really registers up into the 10th center. So this is a, the healing of the karmic levels on the 10th chakra or within the petals and of the 10th chakra. So this is about um, how we love ourselves. Like at the end of the day, like how do we, and not just like the personality, but how dedicated and devoted are we to the path of our soul? And this is how much will we choose to love ourselves and, and not just like ego self of self gratification, but will we do the thing that we know that our soul like, in our heart we need to do to keep growing. And this is a huge center. This is really a lot where um, such also when you're working through different um, deep, deep, deep heartbreak where you're just like, you know, I, I can't get over this grief. This is where like as a practitioner, I will look and it will be um, contraction and the seed of it will be lodged at the 10th chakra. So this is really important to, um, as we, when we do the experience to really sit in, like if you're having some deep, 
um, heart stuff go on and you know it's not the same as it was five years ago or you, you know the difference of um, like deep deep grief and pain that's something that's just like god when is this going to heal versus the um the the aches of the heart chakra which still are achy you know but it's like ooh, that didn't feel good you know i just got in a fight with my best friend ouch i'm feeling it here but it doesn't mean it registered or that it would be at the seat of the 10th center now getting divorced from my twin flame that took me forever to feel like I could like move on, that is definitely registered and was registered at the 10th chakra. So do you get the difference? It's like the heartaches, ouchies. And, and, and when we're just in the personality body and the upper centers aren't activated, I don't mean that the aches of the heart chakra don't feel absolutely excruciating because they do. But as we move up in consciousness, we can start to discern the nuances of the spiritual bodies and the personality bodies. And the heart, the 10th chakra is related to the heart center. The heart center is related to the 10th. So there is a communication going on. So the 11th center. Dun, dun, dun above the 10th. This is, this isn't, I'm going to say this about everyone, but this is an interesting one. This is about um, spiritual will and power. This is about your, the gasoline in the car. So this is actually that shows up in a lot of nervous systems. So deep karmic issues, MS, um, Parkinson's. The root of this is going to be found at the 11 center. So this is the spiritual nervous system. This is the, the gasoline for the, the car, right? Um, so this is about spiritual will and power. So this is um, also related to, this is related to the crown center. And this is the center where um, when you're feeling into it, it's, um, it feels very different that we'll um, experience than the 10th center. The 10th center has the habit of feeling very like, like you're in like the like Care Bears, like pink cloud feeling when you like really rest there. When you go to the 11th center and rest there, it's, it's like, whew. it is your Archangel Michael sword. It is like no business. It is, um, and it's direct, it's clear, and it will get shit done. That kind of feeling. Um, so this actually, especially in also deep depression, this is where this center will be deficient. You'll, you'll notice like this, like, ah, uh, like this contraction around the 11th center because what it does like depression, like long standing depression, not situational, not, I just am getting divorced and I have a heartache, which is at the 10th center. Now I'm depressed. It doesn't necessarily mean it's like the deep depression of, or it's going to be lodged at the 11 center, which is like that, that feeling of like, I just can't, there's like a gray fog and I can't get out of it. Um, so, and I know we all know, um, or have it probably, um, either experienced somewhat, but, or know people who suffer from depression. And so this is where the 11 center is deficient because they don't have enough spiritual will, spiritual power to move the energy whether it's then, you know, depress, depression, depressed energy, getting, you know, getting the, um, the emotion going. So that's going to be at the 11th center when it is, uh, um, healthy atmic 11th center. It's like you have the, the, the ogis, the, um, the, the gasoline, the, the prana to be able to, to have your will. So it's like, okay, I don't really want to get up at 6 a.m., um, but I'm going to. So as we all know, like, you know, it can be so hard to start a practice of running, to start a practice of meditating. But if you can like force yourself, which is usually coming from third chakra to do it, you, you get on the rhythm, right? And then maybe you would miss it if you stopped. That is 11th center healthiness. That is the spiritual will and power to just, especially if you're, you're um, activating the upper centers to get things moving. Gosh, time has gone by fast. So um, the 12th center, the 12th center is the monad. So the monad is the first drop of individuation from spirit, from the divine. And again, this is from the esoteric lineage perspective. So this center 
And the monite actually is talked about in different um, traditions as well. Um, it's, it's the most refined out of any of the centers. When you like rest in the monad, the crown is like, oh, that feels dense. So it is the first, again, I'm gonna say it again, the first drop of individuated self from the divine. So, and our minds really can't actually grasp so much um, what the monad is. So a lot of times too, when we think of like soul or think of like awakened consciousness and we, and we use the word soul, I use the word soul all the time, like soul path, yay. Um, what we're really talking about is the monad because the soul is, um, not all the time, but the soul is, is, is still working out a lot of different things. The monad doesn't have the density, the weight that the soul can carry. So when we feel into the monad, when we feel into this, the highest vibration of yourself, of your being, there is a light, there's a radiance that gets turned on. And the stream that comes from all these centers, from the 12th to the 11th, 10th, 9th, 10th, well, sorry, 11th, 9th, 8th, 7th, it's the sutrapma. So there is a line. It's the, similar to the central channel that goes along the spine. It extends past the crown. It just keeps going. But then, and we call it something different called the sutrapma, goes all the way up to the monad. And from the monad, from there, when you're meditating, then connecting into the heart of the divine. It's really exquisite. It's, it really changes. I know there's a couple people who did my mentorship program last time, and we will work with these centers um, in a more detailed way. And um, if they feel like jumping in to say like how, like, it's just, it's, it's a different experience, especially if you're used to meditating and only meditating within the personality body chakras one through seven, you really get an expansive spaciousness. And so again, going back to what I was speaking in the beginning is as you work with bringing in this higher vibration and fine tuning your spiritual advanced anatomy, the, the, your consciousness shifts, right? So like, why are we all doing this? It's because we want a consciousness shifts and we want a consciousness shift that stays, right? We don't want like a, you know, consciousness shifts of like, okay, we feel all one and we like think that we healed that thing. And then like three days later, we're kind of coming on a crash and it's like, uh, that like it hasn't moved, hasn't moved in the body. It hasn't moved, um, in the energy field. You've gotten glimpses of it. And I'm not saying that those aren't important. Sometimes having a reference point and having those peak experiences is absolutely I mean, just like profound medicine, but how we get that consciousness to stay is we keep working these energetic centers. We keep working with, I call it, I call it the cosmic ladder and our cosmic um, anatomy going back to the divine. Okay. So I'm going to pause. I am going a little bit over. So I apologize for that. Um, you, if you have to jump off you'll get the recording with the meditation in it. So I'm gonna to pause to see if there's any questions. Okay, well, if they come in, I'll um, address. So we're gonna go into the meditation. Oh, whoever said bad grammar, like, girl. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you're a girl or whatever, but anyways, I totally get it. Um, that's why I have an assistant, um, spell check. Um, so we're going to go into the meditation and, uh, I will also send a, um, MP3. You'll get an MP3 that you can, um, that will guide you through this process because I'm running over. I'll do more of a shorter process, um, with it. And then you can um, receive the MP3 that you listen to and um, run these circuits. So I would love to hear, um, I'm going to challenge or invite you to, um, to practice this. Like you'll get the MP3 and practice it and practice it for seven days or four days, like pick a certain number of times. So you'll actually show up for it and notice the difference. And then if you feel like shooting me a message, I would love to hear um, how that has shifted for you. And because, um, 
We're going to end with the meditation. I am going to do just like a quick blurb. Um, so we don't have to, um, go into mental stuff at the end. Cause I always feel weird at least doing that. Um, so um, the shamanic priestess mentorship that I do um, every year is on Tuesday. It starts on Tuesday and there's a few spots left and we dive deep into anatomy like this. We work with clearing our fields. We work with the chakras on every single call, um, but we also work with altar craft and um, ancestral healing. We work with crystal grids and um, I'm not going to go into the whole spiel right now. Um, but there will be a link to, if, it, if you're curious, um, there will be a link to the information about it um, in the, the email that we send out with the MP3, as well as um, a link to book, book a discovery call. So if there is any interest, um, jump on there and we can talk in the next few days to see if it's a good fit. It's a six months deep dive talk about soul evolution program. Like it's, um, I really have um, consciously worked in, you know, working with the internal alchemy, the, uh, the, the energetic anatomy, but also internal alchemy practices along with the shamanic path of working with altars, you know, connecting to Pachamama, listening to the rivers, um, connecting to star beings, so I, I, I really want it to be both because that's been my these path that I've been walking for about 20 years now, side by side is the shamanic and healing realms along with internal alchemy and the path of enlightenment and really um, cultivating the, um, the inner planes and the um, anatomy for that. So I, um, my dream was to create a program where they were both because I would take, you know, I would um, do trainings and workshops and mentors and this realm over here. And then I had it in this here and I just really, I created a program I would want to take, which really combines the two because I do think we can become masters of ceremony and masters of ritual. And I work with some of those masters. And if we don't have the awareness of our own spiritual anatomy, there's just um, a slow it can, it can slow down the consciousness shift and the soul evolution. So that's my spiel. I won't go into it long because I want to um, get into this. Um, and I love, um, you know, I love talking about it. So please, uh, there's only a few days left. It's a powerful group. I work with the group soul and prayer every morning and every night feeling the stream. And it's truly my dedication. I don't um, actually take that many one-on-one -on -one clients when I am holding the mentorship because I really just want to be there for you. And um, it's, it's, I see it truly as um, if we all could go into the, um, the cave or the, and how to take that consciousness and integrate it into daily life. That's a huge piece for me too, is how do we, the path of the householder, the path of the inner mystic, the path of the shaman, the path of the awakened yogi in this Kayapacha, in this middle realm. So I said I wasn't going to talk more about it, but I just did. Okay. Love you all. I am going to um, start the meditation. And afterwards, if you feel like you just want to like float off, that's great because it will be a deep state. Um, drink lots of water. And please email me um, for any questions. And I appreciate all of you being here and taking time on your Wednesday night. And um, yeah, just love you all. And uh, just, I love, I love this. I could talk about it for, I always say like, oh, I should make it longer. I could talk about this for hours. Okay. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for showing up. I appreciate it. All right, love. So let's, that was a lot of information. So let's close the eyes and go back to the breath. And notice how the breath is landing now that there's been all that information, excitement, you know, your centers light up as you just name them. So there's already shifts in the field. There's already shifts in the consciousness.
And then tuning into that grounding core at the base of the spine that goes all the way to the center of the earth. Having it be as wide as your hip. And allowing any excess energy or even that buzzing excitement to just simply go down the grounding cord if it's keeping you from in present time. So we can even let all that talking just compost into light, into the earth. Good. And traveling up the body, we go to the base of the spine, to the root center, our place of connection to the body, the earth, the tribe. Just notice what you notice. And then asking for it to come to balance. And then allowing the awareness to float up to the second chakra, the womb center. the center of creation. And then again, notice what you notice. What does it feel like? Do you get a sense of how, why does it feel excessive? Does it feel contracted? Just noticing a place of sexual energy and relationships, our relationship to finances. Then asking that it comes to balance. And then traveling up to the third center place of fire and will, or seat of emotion, the solar plexus, how we digest life. And notice what you notice. And ask for balance. And moving up to the heart center. Mm. Notice what you notice. Place of love and compassion. Of grief and heartache. And ask for come to balance for right now in this moment. Then traveling up to the throat center, our throat chakra. Again, notice what you notice. Does it feel constricted? Does it feel expansive? And just allowing it to be. And 
and then ask for it to come to balance. Okay. And coming up to the third eye. place of vision, of intuition, of clear sight. Notice what you notice. And ask for it to come to balance. Then traveling up to the crown, the top of the head. Notice what you notice here. How open does the crown feel? Does it feel wide, like almost too expansive? Does it feel closed, somewhere in between? And then notice what you notice. Ask it to come to balance. And then traveling from the crown center up a foot above the head to the eighth center, the soul light or ba. And here, notice what you notice, how big, how wide does this center feel? The soul light. Just notice what you notice and notice how it feels different or if it feels different than the crown, the centers on the body. And if the mind's like, I don't feel anything, I don't see anything, you just let that go and just trust. Just imagine if you did. You could imagine if it was a color, what color would it be? And asking for it to come into more balance that serves you right now. Then moving up the cosmic ladder to your ninth chakra, a little bit above the eighth. Manasic center, the center of higher thought, higher creativity, expansion. And asking for it to come to balance. Then moving your awareness to your 10th center, your buddhic center, a little bit above your ninth. The place of love and wisdom and the higher heart. And notice what you notice. How does this center feel different than the ninth? Does it feel different? Does it feel like it's starting to expand more? Does it feel like it needs some love? And then asking for it to come to balance.
And then traveling from the 10th up to the 11th center. The place of will and power, spiritual will and power. Opnik center. And notice what you notice. What does this center feel like? Is there one that you could feel better than the other? So placing the awareness on the 11th. A place of clarity. Of power. Of prana. And then ask it to come to balance. And from here, we're going to go up to the monad, the 12th center. The first place of individuation from the divine. This is the highest vibration of your individuated self. Self with a capital S. And just notice what you notice at the monad. asking it to come to balance. And from here, we're going to bring our awareness from the 12th center to the heart of the divine, whatever that is for you, the heart of God, heart of the goddess, the heart of the divine Sophia, creator, And allowing that highest vibration of divine light to fuel, to come into the 12th center. From the 12th, we go to the 11th. The 11th, we go to the 10th. Just letting that divine light come down like a stream into the upper centers, just like you would the centers on the body to the ninth center. And then to the eighth, a foot above the head. From the eighth, the crown opens to receive like a cup overfloweth, like the ace of cups coming into the body, into the different layers of the energy field, this high frequency, lighting up your cells, your atoms, your molecules, where your bones start to vibrate at a higher frequency. So taking time to allow this vibration, this light to make its way into the body, into the organs, all the way to your toes, taking your time. As it affects your energy field around your body. Then going back to the crown of the head, notice how different this feels than the monad. Coming all the way to the third eye, the point between the eyebrows, the ajna. The ajna to the throat, to the heart, just letting your awareness go all the way down solar plexus the womb the second chakra all the way to the root the base of the spine and from here just exploring what does it feel how does the the root feel now from when we just 
10 minutes ago tuned into it? Is it vibrating at a higher frequency? Is there lightness? Is there no difference? Just notice what you notice. And then dropping that intention and letting your awareness go back to the breath. With no real agenda, just breathing. Seeing if you feel any different. If there's places that you want to go back and explore. Like to take this moment to thank all of the guides and teachers in the unseen realm for being present with us, for all the souls that showed up and said yes to be at this divine appointment here tonight. May there be great awakening. May the soul expand. May the monad expand until we remember our true self. May we walk the beauty way. May we walk our medicine path, unique to our own light and our own brilliance. May we see ourselves as the divine sees us. May we see others as expressions of the divine. And taking a deep breath in, breathing all the way into the pelvic floor. Allowing the breath to expand and ground. And you can stay inward as long as you like. I'd like to thank you again for being present. Thank you for being patient and going over. It's, we went through a quick run, so I'll send out the MP3 where you can um, explore these centers and explore the connection to the centers on the body in a deeper way. Um, I hope this was helpful. I hope it was enlightening and that you can experience and feel the shift in the field, feel the shift of consciousness, the feel the awakening as you just simply um, brush your teeth, so to speak, on the spiritual body. So thank you all again. And I hope to speak to some of you if you feel the tug, the pull, um, to have a conversation about joining the mentorship. And if not, I hope I see you again in some other capacity. All right, friends, be well, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.